to yeah. bottom. Is that right? <coughs> you be, you be working them out. You don't throw them in the pool. Yeah, yeah he ain't been down. 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 He ain't been so you don't You don't have to lean in or nothing, you just boom. R R is it is the uh is the sound on bro? Everything Okay, why are you blowing smoke over here? Who blowing smoke? Just a little aesthetics, y'all That's good. Damn, that should give you good vision too. Yeah, give me a uh pop. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Hustle Continues Podcast. You got me, San Quinn, Wayne Hayes, and today we bring no other than a, a Bay Area, San Francisco icon. Uh, it gives me great honor and privilege to bring to the Hustle Continues show my guy, my brother, Mr. Rudy Corpus. What's happening, King? What's up, brother? Not right now. Uncle Rudy. The hustle continues. Uncle Rudy, what's happening, baby? The hustle, will t- the hustle Uncle continues. Rudy, you know that. A- yeah, absolutely, man. So, here on The Hustle Continues, we like to tap in and, and check in with people that have um, been on their journey, whatever uh, that may be, whether it's in the music, business, nonprofit sector, just, right. just all over the board. But the main component, what we're looking for, is that don't quit. That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. The ability to sustain through through adversity. So... San Quinn, he hit me on the line. He like, let's get Uncle Rudy. Straight you know up. what I mean? Quinn had a couple of questions. Yeah. Straight up. I got a couple of good questions for you, huh? Yeah, yeah. let's do yeah, it. You know what I mean? Let's but first of all, it. I want to congratulate you on 29 years. Yes, sir. 29, 29 years. years 29, y'all. 29, 29 years. years. It's October. 29 years. October. It's October. Yes, sir. October, and, and, yeah, that's big, huh? And, and real quick, for those who may not be aware, the United Players is a nonprofit organization that's been up and running for 20, 29 years, that specializes and caters to at-risk populations, particularly brothers that brothers and sisters who have been incarcerated, giving them the ability to come out uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the world and add value to the community through working with youngsters, the community in general as a whole, um, also, the work that they do with uh, youth, and and youth ain't just kids now. You know, some of y'all old people act <laughs> like kids. Your damn yeah, self, you know. Man, you so know. youth nowadays goes from what uh, a young age to twenty five, right? The Tate population, the Tate right? transitional age youth, transitional age youth. So we'll talk more about the uh, organization. Eighteen to twenty eight. Right. So this is some of the work that that he's he's doing. And they've done this for 29 years yeah. in San Francisco in the Soma District. Come on, Queen Russell. Yeah. Uh, we we, we want to know what got you doing what you're doing. What, what, what inspired you to do to do what you're doing with United Players? So, so first of all, let me say this: I'm honored, I'm humbled to be here, to have you guys think of me to be at a table to pop this stuff, mm-hmm. right? That's right. Because oftentimes people don't think of people in the nonprofit game as being somebody who you know should be acknowledged in this way. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate that. I'm a native from Frisco. I'm a hustler. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I get it from the mud. That mm-hmm. I come from man. a third world country. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I am the rose from the concrete. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So TL, South the Market, but I'm a Frisco cat, period. Yeah, that's Frisco, You know what I mean? Man. Bay Area cat. That's, that's right. how I put it. That's yep. right. That's so, right. So, so when you said, uh, you know, United Players, 29 years, all this, and that Tate population, right? I'm 52. Mm-hmm. And I still don't know shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You imagine somebody 18 mm-hmm. who they think uh, is, is already 18. He knows everything. And American way says, so when you 18, get out the house, you got to go ahead and hustle and get it yourself. Right. Well, right. shit, he's still learning. He's a baby. Mm-hmm. He's really naive all the way to 28. So, right, right. So, so just to answer your question, what inspired me, mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest, I never ever thought in a million years I'd be doing what I'm doing. Right. I just know God is good. And he put me in a position where now I didn't I didn't found my purpose in life. Mm-hmm. And so when I first started doing this work, I actually met Joe Pops, right? Because yeah. I got busted. Everybody, man, in the mid '80s got out into the dope game. Either they was selling dope or they was using dope, and mm-hmm. I became a drug dealer. Right. So I got busted in '88. Right. 
88. And so from 88 all the way to 93, I was in and out of jail, but there was a program at City College. It was called the EOPS program, mm -hmm. Extended Opportunity Program Services that helped brothers and sisters that came home. Mm -hmm. right. And there was a class, <laughs> right? You had to take classes mm -hmm. to, to go to City College. So I was taking a, a Filipino class because I was trying to learn more about my history. Mm -hmm. And guess who I turn around and I see? Who? Stomp down JB, his excellency, <laughs> yeah, his yeah. pops, right. his excellency, a black yeah. man with a perm in a motherfucking room. <laughs> right, right, Lord, Lord, and I'm in a Filipino class and I'm like, what's up? He said, what's up with you? Mm -hmm. And we started chopping it up, man, and we came locked in. Locked in. Mm -hmm. He was a legend. I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. And so from there, the EOPS gave us jobs because our job was to go outreach and help other guys like us. Right. And that's what really started inspiring me right. is helping people out was guys like us, because I was still Dr. Jekyll in the morning Mr. Rob your ass at night. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really serious about the work that I was doing mm -hmm. until I really started feeling, man, good about helping others. Right, right. You know, giving back. Giving back. It felt good, and that's what really inspired me, is starting there at the EOPS program at City College. Man, that's big. Big shout out to my dad, Long Live. Yeah, Stop, damn, man. come on, man. He was in there with his Lord, our Lord and Savior. That's what he called <laughs> Our Lord and Savior. He pulled up his cat. He had his Cadillac pulling up. Yeah, yeah. That's City it. College. Yeah, that's how he did. That's yeah. how he did. He always popped his player game, man. Yeah. So, so from the night from the '88 to '93, uh, it was a war on drugs. That's right. The same drugs that they put in our community, and then they was targeting the people that it was affecting the greatest. Uh, so they was jumping off buildings, choking us the fuck out about the shit that in the TL right now, they giving it away. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's a whole different level of the game now. Right, so. You know what I mean? They set it up for you to do it out there. They setting up spots for you to lay. You have to take over spots. They giving you a spot. Oh, yeah, they got tents today where you can go get your, your clean needles and your you, you, they give you pipes, phones, your brillos. they give you money, <laughs> all the paraphernalia. Right, and, and uh, got some people in the cut while you getting high, if you die, they gonna revive you and they got federal funding for that. But it, that's yeah. a whole They got the thing. laziest motherfucking homeless people on this planet. It's in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. Shitting on your front doorstep and things like that, nasty. And but tell I, you to clean it up. Ain't that something? <laughs> Next question. Uh, did you ever think about giving up? Because we all have options wow. and everything. Have you ever thought you know, about as, giving as, up? So, so, so as a human being, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm going to tell you, the one thing that makes me want to give up was the thing that inspired me to continue to do this, right? <coughs> seeing somebody who was young that getting murdered, right. right? Going to the funerals and seeing them in that box. When I yeah. see somebody who was young that I built a relationship with and the potentials that they have and the good person that they is, and you see them there dead in the box, it's kind of like bothers your spirit. Mm -hmm. Right. Death is not natural, man. man. And 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 so, you know, at times I've been, man, I ain't trying to I don't want to do this no more. You know, I wanted to tap out. But yeah. then again, the spirit in me, right, and that purpose is what says, you know what, I gotta go harder because I don't want to see nobody else in that box. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 man. Good. So so the so to answer your question, he did wanna quit. Yeah. But he didn't. He didn't. You know what they say, man, the yard can't stop, won't stop. Exactly. <laughs> So what inspires you to keep, you said, you, and you said yeah. what inspires you to keep going. That, yeah, that so, right so, so that same reason, the thing that made me want to quit is the thing that made me want to keep going. Right. And I had conversations, you know, I speak to the big smash, the blaster yeah. upstairs. Yes, right. sir. Right. The almighty creator. Come on, man. Come the on. one and only. Yeah. So, the so, alpha and the omega. <laughs> which, which brings yeah. me to this. What advice would you give the younger you? Yeah. The younger me now? Yeah. Man, um, if you seen you in '94, right yeah, now, what would you tell yourself, man? I don't, I don't, I'd have surrounded myself with better people in my life, right? Right, and I would have took advantage of some of them dudes who were real successful in life. What they told me yeah. to do, mm -hmm. I would have paid attention and listened to them, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> took that avenue. Well, I, I, I want to say this though. You know how they say your association determines your destination? Absolutely. You, so I hung around the wrong motherfuckers. Yeah, you are, you are a direct reflection around the closest three to five people that you hang around each and every day. So if you're hanging around three to five bums, 
Guess what? You're going to be the six bugs. You're going to be the transient. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be the yeah. six bugs. And I all mean bugs in the sense of living on the streets. I mean bugs. core values. Yeah. The person that don't have no core values. The person that's will go for anything. A that's bum what mentality. I'm, yeah, bum mentality. Yeah, you hang. You're going to hang around six shit drug dealers. You're going to be a drug dealer. There you go. You're going to be six around six killers. You're going to be the seven the killers. The seven. Exactly. You know? uh, ain't no, unless you're trying to... Uh, promote change and then you it, it, it's six to one so you're gonna need help you can't go in that room uh and, unless you equip with some old brothers you know how y'all go in the community when y'all go in the community it's not just one ex addict uh uh it's, uh -huh. it's 13 ex addicts so they make sure that one don't slip off in the building and go up in the building right because right. He's still growing, right? right. right? So mm -hmm. we need each other. Right. Uh, yeah, one hundred, yeah. one hundred. It's important. Uh, I, I, I know that. Um, I can't remember, but I, I have a journey, and my journey consists of uh, living a life of crime, living a life of uh, uh, drugs, selling it and using it, and all of the shit, and being caught up in the war on drugs, right? <clears throat> and at some point, I changed, and I took all of the game and the wisdom that I had learned. And I created curriculum and start going into schools. And at one point, go, going into schools, earning money from my, my game and wisdom. That's right. And at, a, at one point, uh, you gave me an opportunity through your same platform, your same nonprofit. You hired me to bring my curriculum, and, and I'm thankful for that opportunity. It's, right. it's, it's currently on my resume. I brag about it because... United Players is a notable. <laughs> United Players is a notable yeah. uh, uh, but, pipeline. But see, right. but you was a player before you wasn't a player. Right, right. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You was already in the game. Right. And so it was it was easy for me to know to bring you along because you didn't get chose. You already got chose. That's right. You dig know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And what you had to offer was life saving. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a no brainer. That's right. Because you was giving us something <clears throat> on the roadmap that brings light. That's right. Uh, you know, I, I got to shout out people like uh, yourself. I got to shout out people like Jack Jack Qua. Jack Jack you know, yep. he, he was one of that's my. That's the GOAT. You know, he was one of my. Uh, that, that's my angel. He the one found me and uh, Bruno and gave me the game. I think he, he told me something like, why settle for him? No, he say, uh, <laughs> why soar with the pigeons? Why peck with the pigeons when you can soar with the eagles? Come on, man. You need to get on the freedom train. Come on, <laughs> you're not honest, Bob. You're uh, Wayne Hayes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 to this day, right, even this morning, Jack, right? Yeah. I was at Juvenile Hall, this morning, and that's what Jack was. Mm -hmm. Purple jacket. 501 jeans yeah. you and his long, long yeah you, you, you got that long ass dreadlock in yeah. the back you remember what? when, yeah, when you still just pushing baby when you just told your story and you said uh when you was in the EOPS program you hadn't you 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 didn't you was going but you hadn't stopped with the with the bullshit right that's right that's how it was for me i was i got out of bruno and um and i still was hustling in in, in page street in the, in the projects and uh and Jack was telling me to come up to Juvenile to speak, to crack my whip. Yeah. And I would go. And then I'd hide my bundle in the bushes. Yeah. And go up in the jail mm -hmm. and say what I had to say and get my bundle out when Jack and them wasn't looking and, and go on by my business. <clears throat> but after about a week of that, not a week because you go on every Wednesday or whatever. So right. after about three or four, five weeks mm -hmm. of me committing, one day I came to Juvenile. When we left, Jack handed me an envelope with about five big faces in it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that was my confirmation. Mm. And then, yeah, little by little, the bundle didn't come with me no more. Yeah. It's, the bundle is the bundle is me. I'm, the I'm the game. You are the yeah. This game don't come in no plastic bag no more. Real talk, on, ain't nothing plastic about it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. reinforced steel. Yeah, and I, I, I brought it there and talked about you hiring me because in the nonprofit sector, that's that's a pretty uh, interesting space to navigate because you're dealing with a lot of money, and you've been right. around for thirty years, and you like the preeminent fucking nonprofit serving our people. Yes. Tell me, man, how does that? How's how do you get in politically? How how does it feel? Do do you feel like they watching your ass? Or, 
just give me some game about so, dealing so, with, so. The, with the mayor and all them people. So, 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 so what's the name of the show? The, the Hustle Continues. It's The Hustle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? One of the things that I learned in that book that a lot of us read, that 48 law, uh, Powers of Law, mm -hmm. is do not ever outserve your master. Yeah. And so you got to know how to infiltrate but don't assimilate when you're in that game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. <coughs> Plan your role and stand in your space. To this day, right, I even though I'm the ED, I'm the director. Executive director. Mm -hmm. I got people who know what they need to do to make it happen. So I got a million dollar uh, grant writer. I don't know how to write. Mm -hmm. I never even graduated from high school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I knew what I needed to get to right. make it happen. Right. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. all that's all I did. You know what I mean? Except I was wise and it's like the dope game. Mm -hmm. Right? You got the people up in there. When you buy the dope, you got your security squad. You got the people out go up there and sell the dope. Yeah. Right? It's the same spirit. Right. Right? It's the same type of plan, but you just use it in a way now where you're serving the right master. You, you because you can't serve two masters in no, the game. No, and that's why, we, even going back to what you were saying, you was out there, man, putting your bundles. I was doing the same shit. I used to put my gun up in there. Mm -hmm. But I would feel, I would feel like, like my spirit would be like a hypocrite. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I couldn't do that, so I couldn't walk no fence. Either I'm going to do it or I ain't going to do it. Right. And once I figured out and I got busted, the last time I got popped was in 97. And I was still, I was in a high-speed chase, bro. With Good. some of the kids and the clients that was mine. So I started at UP in 94. Mm -hmm. I was a gang prevention counselor. I had clients in the car on a high-speed chase what? in 97. Coming from a peace march. Gangster. <laughs> Them motherfuckers was like, God damn. I would say, man, just come on, we gone. Yeah, you, you slide. Everybody's like, God damn, man. I'm like, yeah, we sliding. You slide. Ran into one of the walls in Chinatown. We all belt out. Man, we all got caught. Mm -hmm. And everybody in that car now, right? Yeah. Passed away. What? There was four of us in there. Three of them still, did, three of them ended up dying as time went on. May they all rest in peace. peace. Mm -hmm. About all my homies, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm still here. Right. But what I was saying when, when I went to jail, I was in there, I was like, damn, man, I can't be acting like I'm helping the people out, but here I'm still doing dumb shit. And then in 97, like I shared with you earlier, I had my first son. Right then. 97. And so it's like God started telling me, man, you gonna serve the devil or you gonna serve me? Right. You can't serve two gods. Most and definitely. I chose the light, baby. Mm -hmm. and 29 years later, I'm still in the light. Mm -hmm. Last month, I was in Africa. Come on. Who would ever think, man, I'd be sent to Africa? You went right. to the motherland. Straight up. Congratulations. Come How on, was it? man. How it was, was it? beautiful. It was Everything beautiful. over there. The airports, everybody's black. Mm -hmm. You go to supermarkets, everybody's black, and everybody's showing love. Mm -hmm. Everybody's showing it's love. It's a different feeling of, of human connection, right? Straight up. They really get it out the mud, mud. Yeah. And they so just thankful for the little things they got. Right. They appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And they was good looking at me, and I'm walking down in the slums, and they was going, Mazunga, Mazunga. I'm like, the fuck is Mazunga? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is that? I was like, what's that? The white man. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not the white man. I'm the Filipino man. The Filipino man. And you know what they said? No, you Jackie Chan. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 Pacquiao. Yeah. <laughs> and they got it. Yeah. By the time I was gone two weeks later, yeah. they blessed me with this ring. Uh -huh. You're the black man. Yeah. You're the black man. Yeah. They said black and Filipinos, we the same. You got melanin in you. Natural born allies, baby. Yeah. Yeah. You heard me? Yeah. First yeah. Filipino. Yeah. First yeah. Filipino yeah. was a black man. On, if, man. If you if you, know you are brown skinned and you have, <laughs> you have, if you have brown complexion, you have melanin. But I started a chapter over there. Oh, you have a UP chapter. Okay. Yeah. Tell us where, where uh, you have UP chapters at. So, uh, um, San Francisco, Frisco is the original. Of course. Right? Mm -hmm. I got one in New York, mm -hmm. in the South South Bronx. We got one in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. We got one in the Philippines, mm -hmm. Hawaii, and I just planted a seed in Africa. And you, and, and what you. In Nairobi. That's wrong. And you referring to all of these chapters are nonprofit and up and running in that way, or you just bless them to. Kind of roll with the with the with the. They gotta follow. Right, the right, right, right. So, so <clears throat> everybody's uh, everybody else's city or where they at has a different struggle, mm -hmm. right? So some people, like even in the Philippines, they don't even need to do the nonprofit. Mm -hmm. They just need what they need: mm -hmm. pencils, papers, mm -hmm. all the basic essential things that we have that lay around on the tables in our centers. Mm -hmm. right? They just need all that. They so poor, man, on their feet. 
right? You know, instead of shoes, they get a marker and put a Nike, draw a Nike sign on, on the their feet, feet and playing hoop. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so they just want all the stuff that just they can survive on. Right. You know, out here it's different. Yeah. So the other people, like in New York, right, we had the nonprofit out there. Mm -hmm. But we just transitioned over there. Mm -hmm. In Baltimore, we working on getting it. Mm -hmm. So it's different. Man. It's different. That's incredible. In Africa, you know, I went to one of the poor schools in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And they ain't had no computers. Mm -hmm. They got 110 kids in one class. And a classroom, man, as small as this box right here. It was hot in there, huh? Hot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's incredible, But it was, man. it was beautiful, man. Well, earlier today we was talking, and, and that the nonprofit is, you, you're going to find, he talked about a grant writer. There's going to be money out there to, to serve different populations. There's different places that this money come from. Sometimes it's from philanthropists, sometimes it's from the government, but the word is out, there's money out there. That's right. And so in order to, to, to get the money, you may need a grant writer, somebody that goes and looks up the criteria for the money that's give, being given away, and then the grant writer will write a grant to describe what services y'all present, and then the best company win, the best person with the best pitch for that bread win. Earlier you mentioned that it ain't a lot of money in it. B because, that, because a nonprofit, you have to spend all the money. It's not yours. You get put on salary. He gets on salary as executive director. He pays everybody. But at the end of each year or what they call a fiscal year, the That's money right. have to be gone. Right? So, and, and I've worked in nonprofits. So it really... Depending on what role you playing, it could it could not be a lot of money, or if you shady, it could be a lot of money. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. you're not gonna be around for 29 years. Yeah, yeah it's and all be God's shady. work, right? Yeah. You feel me? Everything that I do, I always move with the spirit, right? right? It's always love, and I always kept that the way it was, and I still authentically the United Players mission. It's what it's always been, violence prevention, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? We never changed up. You got organizations; they would chase the money. Right. And right. change their narrative or change their mission when they need money in that area. Right. 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 And there's a lot of people who are CBOs. Community based organizations. Who are hooked up with certain people in the city to get money, but they don't do nothing. Right. 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 They got hundreds and hundreds of community based organizations all in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And look how the city is. Right. Right. So some people get and they call it uh, poverty pimping. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. And so. So watch this. <clears throat> I'm a hustler. We on a hustle show, mm -hmm. right? The hustle continues. You damn right, man. I know how to deal with the game when it's a drought, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The city right now generates most of its money from Union Square area, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Most of that money goes into the city. The money gets that money and they allocate it out to nonprofits. Mm -hmm. But what's happening in Union Square right now? Oh, they uh, everybody bailing Shutting out. down. The big companies are leaving. Yeah, so a lot of fronts, uh, you know, Store the storefronts are, are not opening no more. So the city will lose money. So what's going to happen is going to be a recession. It's going to be a drought. How do I go to different avenues now to make sure I continue to get money from my organization, not only pay my 30 staff, but to make sure that my community is eating? Because mm -hmm. we don't only feed them, we help bury them, mm -hmm. we help pay their rent, mm -hmm. right? We do all the things that needs to be done. Right. And so, I go check out philanthropists. Yeah. I go check out foundations. Uh -huh. Promoting me on this show, getting on here, mm -hmm. whoever the population sees this, that's right, you can donate. Mm -hmm. It's a contribution, and guess what? It's a tax write-off. Right. And it's going to a good worthy cause. cause. There you right. go. Worthy it's cause. Cause. going to a worthy cause. Mm -hmm. It's like having the best product. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. My shit, man, is effective, it's potent, and it's cheap. <laughs> right, right. Yep. And basically, the, the people that are giving the, the, the My money. My shit is Ronsky Donsky. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Come on, man. man. Basically, you see people in, not to cut you off, when you see people in the United Players sweaters, for the people, you, you give them a pass, man. You know, straight up. And you see them anytime yeah. you see see the United Players sweater. It takes the hood to save the hood. You see that? That mean that person is good. If somebody put got that on their back. They good people. Oh Amen. man, I, I you know what I mean. Yep. I personally, no. I personally utilize mm -hmm. the uh, the long mm -hmm. reach of, of of UP. Yeah. And I had a family member that I was uh, doing some intervention with and trying to make sure that they were all right down in the L's and uh, some information that came my way 
about some, you know, that mm -hmm. they needed to be checked into. And I called Rudy. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, Rudy, you know, my people is out here, man. And um, this is where they at. And he got right on it. He called me. I located him. I mm -hmm. talked to everybody on the block. This is what, what, what happened. Mm -hmm. And it's cool. It's better now. Just be. So, Takes the hood to say the hood. Yes, sir. Just, the it's hood to say the hood. Just talk. You're walking, man. Got to, man. But, but earlier today, you acknowledged that uh, what well, we all know that, you know, you not taking the money and running, so therefore it can be considered that it's not a lot of money in nonprofit. That's why they called it nonprofit. That's right. But I'm aware of a, <clears throat> I thought there was going to be this opportunity that your story was going to be, a, was going to be told. And Correct. I thought that story, once it got told, and go, it was going to be on a, they were actually writing a movie about you. That's right. And I thought I was, I was so excited for that and happy for you. And I was like, when that, when that come, I'm, I'm first of all, I'm going to be there. Uh, You're going to be in the movie. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to either be in it. Be in I'm going to be at the debut. Based but, on a true story. But I, I knew that it was going to put you in a position that you was going to be able to be blessed financially. And then I heard that at, at, at the moment, at the time, it wasn't going to happen. Right. Where, where does that stand right now? Tell us about that project. So anything that has to do with business with Rudy, mm -hmm. contracts got to be right. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. If the contract ain't right and I don't feel comfortable with the project, I'm not going to sign it. Mm -hmm. right, right. Period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's the bottom line is, okay. you know, I'm good with you and I love you. Right. But when it comes to business, I'm a businessman too, mm -hmm. right? Especially if my line, my life is being portrayed out there. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure, man, that it's told correctly and it's did right. But at the same time, the business aspect of it is going to be correct. And if it ain't, compensation, most definitely. I'm a backup like a sea crab. Ain't like sea crab, <laughs> right? That's what your daddy told me yeah, yeah. back in '93. Yeah. He said, "Ru, we ain't gonna fuck with them. We gonna back up like sea crabs." Exactly. I said, "Hold on, let me write that one down. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one." Yeah, back up like an eight-legged sea crab. <laughs> so it sounds like um, no, no, it's nothing personal, right? Right. This is business to me. Business, right. yeah, business. You know what I mean? Right. And so, and so, so it sounds like uh, to use your name and likeness to tell your story is it was good. You with it? But it must be told right, and at the end of the day, the, the, the business has to be done. It got to be right. Yeah, I mean, you know, things, when it comes to the nonprofit game, nothing is glamorized about it, really, mm -hmm. right? Because right? you're ne never put on the forefront. But when I was getting an opportunity, this ain't the first time somebody wanted to do a story on me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or write a book, you know what I mean? But I started learning and getting the game how it goes. Mm -hmm. This is a whole different level right. of nonprofit. And so I started really doing research on it. And when I didn't, I got good advisors that told me, because they in the game. Right. You know what I mean? Like you, you, right. you know this stuff good. That's right. You know this good. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't send Rudy on a cliff, man, to fall off if I'm blindfolded. You would say, hold up, slow down. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me give you some of this before it goes down. And so I just wanted to make sure if it was going to be done right, it was going to be done right. Mm -hmm. And contracts weren't right. So, so, so we still actually making it the right way. Hell yeah, come on, man. Yeah. Okay. Shoot. So, so, so to the to the people that's uh, trying to make it happen, we can always get back to the drawing board. It never is a, a 100% no. Man, come it's, on. It's, I'm, I, like I said, man, I'm 52 years old, be 53 this year in November, mm -hmm. and watch this. I don't know shit yet. <laughs> that's right. And so, still learning. Yeah, come you're on, still man. Learning. The, I'm end of, the end of learning is the end of living. Yeah, man. So you're going to keep learning. And so I want the movie, you know, to be good. Right. I wanted to be right. The story is so impeccable. It can't do nothing but be good. I, I feel like the only thing that could, yeah, the story got to be right. If they tell the story the way that it is, that the truth is going to be a bestseller. And then so just get. And the, but you got to buy the book first. Right. Then do the documentary, and then the movie. Right. Because Rudy is only known maybe like Bay Area, certain places. So people got to get to know you if the movie's going to be put out there. Right. Right. Well, did everybody know? Uh, did everybody know uh, what's the principal name out there in uh, Richmond or what, whoever they, they made that oh, movie um, about? Uh, Lean on was it? Lean, Lean on, on me. me. Yeah, Lean on me was Joe Clark. No, yeah, Joe, Joe Clark. Clark. Joe Clark. Now, Joe that Clark was, was in, in New Jersey, but yeah, but see, there was a book written about it. 
first, uh, so people could read on it. Richmond basketball coach. Yeah, yeah. Coach, Carter. Coach, coach Carter. Coach Carter. Coach Carter. Nah, it wasn't no. Yeah. It was just a, a local story that just had a, a tremendous impact. Your story raw as hell. I don't need the documentary. Man, you survived in San Francisco. You, 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 you can give me. You're still I mean, the most I, popular city, man. You a Filipino, man? man they, they don't even believe it. I, said, I go to New York. They say, "What's a Filipino, man?" I said, "You never met a Filipino." I said, "Man, man, you gotta meet a Filipino, man." Yeah, they yeah. didn't know. They sure didn't know in Africa. They was calling me the Mazunga. <laughs> <laughs> all the way back with G Bugs. We shout out to G Bugs, my Filipino partner. Yeah. He, he the one that do dresses and stylists and everything, man. I get a, a lot of crispy style from my boy G Bugs, man. Filipinos got man, flavor. But see, a lot of people didn't start recognizing and knowing Filipinos until Pacquiao. Really? Mm, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I've, I've been, always been around him. Yeah, yeah exactly. And we got the kings and queens that come from our country and our land. We are amazing people. Most definitely. You know what I mean? yeah. My first cousin. And, and some Filipino. of the finest women on the planet. You yeah. gotta believe it, Jack. And some of the best food. <laughs> hey, and some of the best food. Lumpia, the Lumpia, the Ponce. No, that's just the shit that y'all see. Right, Man, right. we got some shit called Dinaguan. Yeah, Dinaguan, what's that? What's that? Man, that's blood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the me, pig's brother. blood. The pig's blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the, Bugger on is uh it's shrimp, you know what I mean, yeah. that you put on some of the food. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know I speak Philip Tagalog. Yeah, you Filipino. Yeah, you might as well say you might as well say he look like my cousin Kum, in the Philippines. Kum, kumustaka. Mabuti po salamat. Anang paalang mo. Rudy. Anang paalang mo Wayne. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not no more. You know what that means? What that mean? What's How much money you got in your pocket? <laughs> <laughs> now I mean, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you cut a chogi mean? <laughs> what, who did what? Cut a chogi. Cut a chogi. That sound like Japanese. Cut a chogi. What do that mean? I don't know. What's that my, mean? My, my father told me that it was a word. Man. Oh, your father had so <laughs> much slang. Yeah. He had so much slang. He was mixing Japanese, Filipino. Cut a choke. Yeah, that's that's some slick shit. Yeah. yeah. That's some JV, man. Baby, let's get at the Philly Wanichi group. Hey, 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 Rudy. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you this question, but I know the answer to it because you was like, I don't do all that. Tell us where they could. Uh, oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's an entrepreneur. Uh, uh, and you know, an entrepreneur, multiple streams of income. You you embarked into the cannabis world, right? Well, honey. Tell us about that. So thanks for asking. So in San Francisco, the late Mayor Ed Lee, may he rest in peace, said, if anybody is going to start a dispensary store, they have to get somebody who was affected by the war on drugs. An equity. And partner, an equity. An equity partner. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, in my neighborhood has the most dispensary stores in District 6. You had rich folks who was parachuting in, buying the buildings, but they never relinquished none of the funding to the people in the community. So when he changed that, that narrative, right, mm -hmm. these people started moving in, they couldn't open no weed stores. Mm -hmm. Then he passed away. Mm -hmm. So London pushed that line. That was big. Big shout out to Cuz. Yeah, yeah, straight up that. London. What's up, London? That's sis. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and from Filmo. Mm -hmm. Right? It's my but she a Frisco. Frisco. She a Frisconian. Oh, Frisconian man. And so when, when these stores started opening, people started pairing up with businesses. Sean Richards was the first man, the first black man to open as an equity store in the hate. He paired up with cookies. Mm -hmm. yeah, so here and came Burners, Burners and the Hate with Burners. Shout out to Burner. And then Stizzy was one of the biggest brands started in L.A. Mm -hmm. They moved in my neighborhood, and they said, we wanted to open a store in Union Square. So that was originally my store, but I handed it off mm -hmm. to my homegirl, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Cindy De, uh, uh, De La Vega, who's from Sunnydale. Mm -hmm. She's the first Latina. So I had the store in the south of Market. I started seeing how they was moving. They gave me the contract. I got my lawyers. We worked it out right. The language is right. I signed over there, so I'm an equity partner in the Stizzy store in a neighborhood where I'm born and raised, the Soma. Come on now. But the money that I generate, the profits of the proceeds, go to restorative justice. Mm -hmm. Guys and girls who come home from prison, mm -hmm. families who pass away and they can't bury their families. Right. We help pay the funeral. Right. We help for families who can't pay their rent. Right. I pay their I do so much stuff under the table, that's under what the radar. You choose, they don't know. Me. That's what you choose to do in my Chopra. store. Oh, if you go to the book. store though, and y'all seen it, you got a wall of all the lifers. Yeah. 270 years of prison time amongst probably 12 guys. 270 mm -hmm. years. 270 years. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Auntie just did the 45 years. Oh, Glenn Holden, yeah, he's on the wall. Mm -hmm. Yep, OG Glenn Holden. <clears throat> and so the money that we 
make the, and this was a part of the contract that some of the proceeds would go to the people mm -hmm. in San Francisco. Oh, it doesn't matter where you're from. Right. You know, you need help. I'm going to help you. All right. So with that being said, um, that's just another avenue to make money. Oh, we, people. we know equity. We were thankful that you, um, uh, upon, uh, earlier, I get, I know y'all have been up and running, but I reached out to you straight up, um, to, to bring San Quinn. Did a, a meet and greet there. It was successful. Success. Yes. We appreciate you having the first us. one too. I'm absolutely, absolutely. I looked over there and peeked in your backyard. I'm like, my, <laughs> my homie ain't did this yet. Yeah, I man. know he'll consider us. Yeah, and man, and you did time. that. You yeah, did that. Man, Come on, man. man. And even when we opened up, man, I give a shout out to Selsky because he came, brought his food truck, mm -hmm. fed the people. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Kept it, you know, Frisco. Yeah. All right. So before we get out of here, tell us: Do you have any social media sites, or whether it's your the, the uh, organization, the Cannabis Club, or yourself that you'd like to share? Sure. So, I mean, me personally, right, my uh, Instagram is Big Root, you know, Root. R-U-T. R-U-T, B-I-G-R-U-T, 415. And then, you know, uh, United Players is at 1038 Howard Street. If anybody want to volunteer, y'all want to help out the community get back, come check us out. Y'all want to contribute, donate. All proceeds go to a worthy cause. What's mm -hmm. the website? Yeah, it's www United Player, spelled P L Y A Z. A Z. Mm -hmm. like All right. Org. And then lastly, like the and lastly, your Stizzies is located where? Five eighteen Brandon Street in San Francisco. All right. Five eighteen Brandon. We got some of the best weed on the planet. <laughs> Medicine. Yeah. Food of the gods. That's right. That's right. Hey, G Val, I gotta hook you up. <laughs> like a tow truck. Come pull up, baby. Come on, man. I got y'all. So listen. With that being said, man. You know the hustle continues with my man Rudy Corpus. It's a blessing. We're thankful to have you. Without a doubt, huh? Thank you for coming, man. I love y'all, man. For sure. I swear to God, man. I love y'all, man. Talk, man. Like you Pops told me, like a fat kid, little cake. Come That's on, man. Right. Do you hear you? Come yes, on. <laughs> yeah. Listen up. The hustle continues. All the time. For life. United players. For life.